Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ali and in this video we're going to talk about easing, the most requested tutorial in a long time. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Now, the first thing I want to talk about here is to define easing. What's the purpose of having it? Where and how you should use it? And why is it also available in other editing software on the market? So easing, it basically helps our elements to bring them to life by making them look more natural and in a dynamic way. And what I mean by that is, let's say, for example, we have a character that's walking from left to right on our canvas, or we have a car that's moving from left to right on our canvas or any other direction. The idea here of an easing is that it plays an important role that it brings our elements to life by making them look more natural, just like in real life. Now, what's cool about easing is that it gives us a variety of effects that we can choose from to play with in our animation and make you know, our elements look more natural. So what we've got here is things like elastic, bounce, linear, smooth, expo, back, so on and so forth. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you a text um, in, a, in a lifeless um, effect. And I'm also gonna show you another one that looks more natural when we animated. Uh, so the one you're looking at here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and replay it um, so you can see better for yourself. So you can see here that this is an example of a lifeless animation because it does not have any easing effect applied to it. And let me show you the difference of another one so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this one comes to life because I added some easing effect to it. Now, what happens if I play it in slow motion here um, is that it slides up, as you can see here, and it bounces a little, then it goes back to where I want it. So that's what's really good about easing is that it really helps our animation to look more natural when creating our videos. Now, the basics of animation is having a property, a scale, a rotate, position, or whatever and then setting keyframes set values for that property. And what I mean by that is that inside of Create Studio, when we add an animation using keyframes, we have two, anim two keyframes for each animation. The first keyframe represents the starting point of our animation. And the second keyframe represents the ending point of our animation. So in this example here, you can see that we have a little square um, at the bottom here, and then we have another one on the top here. The first one represents the starting point of our animation, and the second one represents the ending point of our animation. So if I play this and show you what happens when you set keyframes for your animation that it goes from one position to another and that's called so this is position from bottom to top and again going from bottom to top using keyframes the the one the first keyframe represents the starting point and a second keyframe represents the ending point of our animation or where we want it to be so now we have an example of a character that's uh, walking from left to right, and I added an effect to it. So you can see for yourself how smooth it is walking from left to right. So you can see here that I added an easing effect that's called linear. Linear tends to give a smoother you know, animation effect, especially when using characters. So understand when you're using easing effects, you have to make sure the type of element that you're working with, because it could be different. Now, some says there is no rule for using easing effects on any animation, but it really comes down to the um, elements that you're working with. And that really de determines the type of, you know, easing that you can use on your elements. So for example, on our character here, the best easing effect that we can use to get them to walk from one location to another is linear. So let me show you another example using a different, a different easing effect. So here, for example, we have a football that's bouncing. Now, it's pretty obvious when you throw a, a football or a ball, you know, on the ground, it bounces. So in that case, we need a bouncing effect to make it look more natural. So in this case, for a football, I used a bouncing effect to make it look more natural in a dynamic way. 
So again, keep in mind when using easing, um, you have to determine easing effects based on the elements that you're working with. Last but not least, I want to talk to you about easing options. So in our case here, we have three options, ease in and when we have ease out and ease in out. The difference between all three is that in ease in, it affects the values as it moves from the first keyframe. Ease out, it only affects values as it reaches the second keyframe. Ease in out or ease in and out affects bo both moving out of the first keyframe and moving into the second keyframe. So I wanna play this in a slow motion so you know exactly what I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna start with the first one, ease in. And you can see here that the square is bouncing a little at the beginning, and then it does nothing, you know, at the end or the at the end of the animation. Moving on with ease out. So ease out, it only affects the ending point of my my animation. So if I play slowly here, you can see that there's nothing happening on the beginning, but it bounces a little at the end of the animation. Last but not least, on the third one, ease in, in and out, it affects both ways, the starting point and the ending point. So let me show you, you can see here a little bit of a bounce at the beginning and a little bit of a bounce also at the end of the animation. So now you know the difference of ease in, ease out and ease in and out. I hope this has been helpful. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.